The Monster Hunter series has always, to me, felt very difficult to get into, due in part to its less than stellar online support, its level of complexity, and the fact that I didn't really know anyone who played it. And for me to be invested in a game like this, a real sense of community is pretty critical, and my reservations regarding the series would have remained just that, until Monster Hunter Rise released. Hi my friends, I'm Mike and welcome to the Lion's Lounge, where today we'll be diving into Monster Hunter Rise and what it's done to get me so invested in it. And at the end, I'll be making a cocktail inspired by one of the items in the game. So as someone who wasn't really a fan of the series before, what made me want to give Rise a shot? To start, the game is on the Switch, allowing for portability when I want to have a quick session, or docked when I plan on sinking serious time into it. And what's really impressive is that despite the fact that the Switch is not a performance powerhouse, and that the game runs at 30 frames per second, it's incredibly smooth. Like, shockingly smooth. For all the time I've played both solo and online, even when there's a lot going on, I haven't noticed a single instance of a dropped frame, and this is largely due to Rise being developed using Capcom's RE engine further demonstrating how impressive it is. The other thing that drew me to Rise is its art direction. The setting is a sort of feudal Japan with fantasy elements, seen in the design of the village and the maps, the characters, and especially the monsters, who were all initially presented via their wanted posters in a beautiful Japanese watercolor style. These monsters, especially the bosses, are incredible. Each have their own quirks, abilities, and weaknesses, and there's not a single design I don't like. In particular, I'm partial to Magnamalo and the final boss of High Rank 7 that I won't spoil here. Other improvements include Palamutes, dog companions who fight alongside you in battle, in addition to your Palico, that you can also ride to traverse the maps much more quickly. And like your character, you can customize your Palamutes and Palico with special armor and weapons that you can forge from the monsters you hunt. Like the way Gas Harag looks? Craft an outfit from them. Think that switchblade from Magnamalo looks sick? Go get them. You can even unlock color swaps to tailor your gear to you, and obtain switch skills too for each weapon to aid in your specific playstyle. And this brings me to one of the other major additions to Rise, wirebugs. Wirebugs serve two main purposes. The first is that they add another layer of quick movement for your character, allowing you to reach locations you couldn't before, and to dodge attacks at the last moment. Their other function is that they can be used to trigger switch skills, abilities unique to each weapon that allow you to perform powerful attacks or help support your team. There's definitely a lot more to talk about with Rise, but the last thing I want to bring up is my favorite aspect of the game, and the reason I've put so much time into it. And it's honestly just how many people are into the game, and how seamless it is to play online. There's no convoluted lobby or really any wait times at all. Just enter a lobby ID or hop into one of your friend's lobbies and you're in. Online games thrive on their ability to make playing with people easy and enjoyable. And all of my favorite moments with Rise have been hopping in a group with friends and just working together to take down the next monster and then posing like idiots when we're done. Chances are if you're watching this, you're already playing Rise. But if you aren't, take it from a guy who is always hesitant to get into this series. Rise is the perfect game to start. Now that I'm done selling this game to you, it's time to make a cocktail. And for this episode, I wanted to feature a drink based on an item in the game, this being the Mega Demon Drug. The Mega Demon Drug is a more effective version of the standard Demon Drug, and temporarily increases your attack power by 7. You never really see it, but based on its icon, it's an orange-red color and is kept in a diamond-shaped container. So I created this cocktail with all that in mind. So as you can see, I have my diamond shaped decanter, which I figured would be perfect for this. I also want to note that when you look at me making this, you're going to see I'm using a lot more than I say in the video, and that's because the recipe I'm giving you is for one. I'm basically multiplying by four so I can fit it in this container. So to start, take a cocktail shaker and add two ounces or 60 milliliters of blood orange juice. Next, add two ounces or 60 milliliters of bourbon. Then three quarters of an ounce or 22 and a half milliliters of maple syrup. And lastly, a dash of Angostura bitters. Add some ice and shake for 12 seconds. Then I'm just gonna double strain this into the container. 
And there you have the Mega Demon Drug from Monster Hunter Rise. I recommend you serve this over ice. All right, let's give it a taste. That's strong. So what's really interesting about this cocktail is that the blood orange juice and the Angostura bitters are probably what shine through the most. But at the tail end, you do get that sweetness from the maple syrup, as well as sort of the vanilla notes from the bourbon. Overall, it's a very tart and spicy cocktail that's also really powerful. And what's cool is that when you serve it over ice, it starts to mellow out over time. Already on my second sip, it's a lot sweeter than the first one. So I can already taste the bourbon and maple syrup shining through. Is it the prettiest cocktail I've made? No, it looks really sinister. But with a name like Mega Demon Drug, how else would it look? So today we talked about Monster Hunter Rise and made the Mega Demon Drug. If you like this video and want to see more, please like and subscribe. If you have any other cocktails from your favorite series you'd like me to make, let me know in the comments below. If you want to see what I make outside this channel, follow me on Twitter at Mr. Space Lion or Instagram at Mr. Space Lion. But thank you so much for stopping by the Lions Lounge. I've been your bartender, Mike, and I hope to see you next time.